The Secret History is a novel that has captivated and disturbed readers since its publication in 1992. The book tells the story of a group of six classics students at a fictional New England college who become involved in a dangerous and secretive experiment that culminates in murder. But more than a mystery, this book explores the allure of the elite, the price of exclusion, and the power of myth. So, in this video, we will be exploring the cult-like mentality in The Secret History and how it reflects some of the darker aspects of human nature. Because uh, those, those are the fun aspects, am I right? By the way, there won't be any huge spoilers. The murder is on the first page and we find out who was killed and who killed the person. Uh, so yeah, this has been described as more of a why done it as opposed to a who done it. So our narrator Richard Pappen confesses in the prologue that he and his friends have committed a terrible crime, a murder, and he admits that he feels no guilt or remorse about it. Honestly, what a mood. Instead, he reflects on how he was drawn into this tight-knit group of classic students, led by the charismatic and eccentric Julian Morrow, who teaches them ancient Greek and also encourages them to explore the mysteries of life and death as every good professor should. The social dynamics of the group create both a unique sense of camaraderie and constant tension that builds over time. The members largely come from some sort of affluent background, so they already have a pretty skewed view of how the world works. Uh, Julian, their professor and their sort of talisman, is extremely independently wealthy and thus separated from the world around him in many ways. And this is something then that uh, filters into his small group of students, which is literally just the six of them. Richard even observes that the rest of the group seem disdainful of what is going on in the larger world in regards to politics and other current events. As well as that, the group is also barely aware of their community beyond the classics course, which is already a tight-knit and exclusive liberal arts college attached to a small New England community. All of this creates a sense of elitism, especially in Henry. He is perfectly content with becoming lost in the Greek translations that Julian assigns or some other literary or artistic pursuit that he alone understands or has interest in. He completely cuts himself off in numerous ways from everyone, including his closest friends. The novel portrays the classics as a sort of religion with its own rituals, beliefs, and myths. The students become so absorbed in their studies and their friendship, they form a self-contained world, this toxic bubble that excludes and even despises the rest of the college. They speak in their own language, wear their own clothes, and share their own secrets. And this elitism has a dark side as it leads to arrogance, delusion, and violence. The students become so convinced that they are special, chosen, above the law, that they act accordingly. The Secret History also shows how the students' obsession with Greek mythology and tragic heroes becomes its own self-fulfilling prophecy. They start to see themselves as doomed, fated to repeat the mistakes of their literary models, and they seek to escape that fate by committing a sacrificial act that they believe will make them immortal. When I was reading this book, I was just thinking like, are they all sociopaths? And then I was like, no, like statistically, what are the chances of six people in the one group being sociopaths. Statistically, pretty low. I think the most sociopaths I've ever seen in one room is three. But I think it's this cult-like mentality and this group thinking and the elitism and the exclusivity that kind of draws out these more sociopathic traits from all of the characters who would maybe otherwise be uh, not so sociopathic. Except for Henry. I think Henry's just a straight up psychopath. Um, and he's also my favorite character. Something I also want to touch on as a little aside, something else that I've really enjoyed about this book, is the obsession with beauty. Donna Tartt's narrator seems little interested in sex, but is readily intoxicated by beauty human, natural, or poetic. The novel notices how important beauty is to us, yet how rarely anyone speaks on it. Kalapa ta kala. Beauty is harsh. Excuse my terrible Greek pronunciation. Beauty is harsh is the first sentence that Richard learned in Greek, and it becomes a sort of dictum for him. He comes to relish the beauty that shocks you, as Alexander Pope put it. Beauty jolts us out of our boredom. Chapter one of The Secret History begins with Richard Pappin's retrospective reflection of his character's downfall. It commences with the inquiry, does such a thing as the fatal flaw, that showy dark crack running down the middle of a life, 
exist outside of literature. I used to think it didn't, now I think it does. And I think mine is this, a morbid longing for the picturesque at all costs. The Secret History is a cautionary tale about the dangers of groupthink, the illusions of grandeur, and the consequences of ignoring basic ethical principles. It shows how the allure of the elite can lead to the formation of a cult-like mentality where conformity and loyalty are prized above reason and compassion. Despite all that, the cautionary tale, etc, etc, this book really made me want to start a little tiny cult and maybe commit a murder. 